Welcome to this power yoga class. I hope you see that I'm a little bit further away from the camera that I normally am, but I wanted to display this cross behind me as it is the theme of Easter. And this is a good way to be introduced to Easter and the stories that the Bible says about what actually happened during Easter. I know a lot of people don't really know or are not completely sure about why all these holidays are put in there. So uh, welcome, and I hope you find a comfortable seated position. I'm going to read the passage from uh, the passage version, actually, <laughs> passion version of the Bible in just a moment. If you want to skip that, no problem. I think the reading will take something like three minutes. But first, uh, do what you need to do to make yourself comfortable. If you want to lay down instead of, of being seated, of course you can do that. And also if you want to move as I read, if that helps you to listen in, you're welcome. And as I read, I want to invite you to picture this scenery in front of you and just see with your inner eyes what's going on here. So Jesus has been walking around in all of Israel for all almost three years doing stuff and people are talking about him all over, gossiping, rumors are floating and this specific Easter in Jerusalem or the Passover feast as it was back then, there's a lot of conversation about who Jesus is, why he's doing the miracles he is and all of that. So it's kind of a boiling cup of different stuff going on there. So this is Jesus' final approach to Jerusalem. So just listen in. When he arrived at the stables of Anania, near Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples ahead, saying, When you enter the next village, you will to hear it there a donkey, young colt, that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it to me. And if anyone stops you and asks, <laughs> what are you doing? Just tell them, this is needed for the Lord. The two disciples entered the village and found the colt exactly like Jesus said. And while they are untying it, the owners confronted them, asking, what are you doing? The disciples replied, We need this donkey for the Lord. After they brought the colt to Jesus, they placed their prayer shawls on its back, and Jesus rode it as he was descent from the Mount of Olives towards Jerusalem. As he rode towards the city, people spontaneously threw their prayer shawls like carpets on the path in front of him. As soon as he got to the bottom of the Mount of Olives, the crowds of his followers shouted with a loud outburst of excited joy over all the mighty wonders of power they have witnessed. They shouted over and over, highest praises to God for the one who comes as king in the name of the Lord. Heaven's peace and glory from the highest realm now comes to us. Some Jewish religious leaders who stood off from a procession, said to Jesus, Teacher, order your followers to once stop saying these things. Jesus responded, Listen to me. If my followers were silent, the very stones would break forth with praises. In 
in some other versions where the story is told in the Bible, there's also these leaves of palm trees the people are, are using. So that's why, at least in Denmark, we call it Palm Sunday, because that's also what they use. It's just not written down there. All right. This was the narrative, and I'll get back to it just a little bit during our class, but mainly I'll just let the story be the story. Find your way into down dog, hip with distance in between your feet, and then bend one knee at the time. Find your breath. Let's move from down dog to plank and back to down dog. So typically it would be great to inhale as you move to plank. Slowly stack wrist, elbows and shoulders. Exhale, navel in as you move your hip up and back. Let's do that a few times in your own rhythm. You can wave your <laughs> way to the front. And you can come down on your knees in plank pose. One last time to your plank and down dog. Then walk your feet to the top end of the mat. Fold forward, bend the knees as much as you need today. You can take a hold of your elbows and swing from side to side to open up the back and actually also the hamstrings a little bit here. We'll do a few sun salutations. Let go of the elbows, rise up into mountain pose. So sun salutations are not celebrations of the sun as such, celebration of the creator of the sun. Take your arms above your head and fold forward. Lifting up halfway. Take a look at your mat. Then bend your knees, palms on the mat. Step it back to down or uh, plank pose. Maybe on your knees this time. Elbows by your ribs as you slowly lower down. Using your lower, the behind the triceps of your arms. Lift up in baby cobra. Tuck your toes under, down dog. Adjust your stance. I always have to walk my feet just a little bit closer to my hands. Let's follow our breath. Inhale to the front. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, high mountain. Arms above your head. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plank to low plank, stepping or jumping back. Cobra up, dog. Inhale. Downward facing dog. Exhale. One breath and down dog. to the top of the mat on your inhale, fold forward, rise up, inhale. Like the people there, waving their hands <laughs> and folding forward, laying down their, their clothes. Half lift, inhale, plank to low plank. Cobra up dog, exhale down dog. And let's get some of that power move in here. Take your right leg up towards the sky and then open up your hip, bending your knee and really elevating this knee up high, taking your heel towards your glute. Maybe looking at the foot standing on the mat. Is the foot still aligned with the long end of the mat? Take the navel in, 
tuck your knee underneath the belly and then step it to the top end of the mat. Line knee and ankle, warrior one. The foot out to the side, all of a little bit, 45 degree maybe, and then rise up into warrior one. Let your hip sink a little bit more to the front, trying to close your hip. And I couldn't find a more fitting posture than humble warrior, I think, for this one. I don't know what a humble warrior is, but I think it might be Jesus, right? It, he wasn't the typical warrior. He was more an internal warrior than an external fighting the Romans. All right, grasp behind, hands behind you with your elbows folded, squeezing your shoulder blades back and together, and then lean forward just a little bit, all going deep. Your spine is somewhat straight, so you don't hinge, like really like ro rolling, rounding your back. Let go. Hands down on the mat, lift the back heel off the mat and lift left leg off the mat, square off the hip, toes pointing down, maybe take a look at your feet and try to align heel with your hip. And then maybe letting go of the four, take your arms out to the side and to play with it, palms facing up this time. Take your shoulders down, squeeze them a little bit together. Stay here for another breath. See if you can keep your balance. Bent the standing knee. It's going to be eagle pose. So this left leg, wrap it around once or twice. Of course, just take your toes down on the mat if you need to. And then if you want to do your eagle arms, left arm underneath. So right arm is at top. Folding your hands around, lifting the elbows a little bit off your chest and take your hands away from your face. Your spine is straight. We'll stay here for a little bit more. Really feeling the fire in the thighs as you squeeze the inner thighs together. Mountain pose. Swaying a little bit from side to side, catching your breath. And again, take your arms towards the sky and fold forward, moving through sensitization A into our down dog, half lift, plank, low plank, cobra up dog, downward facing dog. And maybe side out if you need to. Try to see if you can take the shoulders away from the ears, slight bent in the elbow. Left leg, lift it up, gauge your root lock, pelvic floor, bend the knee and really lift up, create length in the inner thighs there. Remember to breathe and breathe deeply. One more breath here. Closing the hip, knee underneath your belly, and then step to the front. Warrior one again. Make sure there's still hip width distance in between your heels. Look to the front, and then rise yourself up into warrior one. When you're here, you can always shorten the distance in between your feet, or <laughs> create a longer distance for more power and stretch here in your SOS and hip flexors. A 
and then let's humble ourselves. Riding on a donkey like Jesus did was actually uh, an act of humbleness. He could have chosen a white, beautiful horse, <laughs> but he didn't. <laughs> Bend the elbows, fold your hands behind your shoulder blades, squeeze together, navel in, activating the abs as you lean forward. Humble warrior. If it doesn't feel good in your back foot, you can always lift it up so that your heel is like standing up here. A little bit more balanced though. Two more breaths, going low, creating heat. Release. Fingers on the mat, heel off and kind of move yourself to the front. Closing your hip so the joints there are aligned. Get your glutes, buttocks, back heel again aligned with the hip if possible. Keep holding the floor or if you wanna let go of the floor and take your airplane, but with your palms facing up just to create a little bit more of a different experience. Staring at the ground in front of you. Focusing on breathing. Slowly come out of it. Eagle pose. So see if you can keep your balance <laughs> as you just gently move into version of mountain. Take the right leg around once or twice. Lots of fun balance here. <laughs> this time, right elbow is underneath. You bend your knees quite a lot. And again, look firmly at the ground in front of you. And breathe. Activating your thighs. Stretching the shoulder blades behind you. Two more breaths. Release. <sighs> Mountain pose. Just a few more postures. Sweep your hands up towards the sky, reaching up as high as you can. And then take your hands, you can just hold your hands here, navel in, lean forward, slowly. It's pretty important that your core is engaged here. If it doesn't feel good at any time in your back, bend your knees and just come into a forward fold a little bit quicker. <laughs> But we're trying to do it slowly right now. Notice how you stretch your thighs or <laughs> actually the back of the leg more and more as you lean forward if you don't bend the knees. At some point, you go into your forward fold. Let your forehead reach further down towards your shin. Then lift your head up just a little bit, fingers on the floor and maybe on the block actually. Right leg, lift it up. We're gonna move into two, um, forward fold with a hip opener. So lift your right leg up as high as you can. You can point your toe. So just go ahead and lift. No need to square off the hip. Just really, really lift. So this is a forward fold, so you can either really choose to let your forehead reach down as you lift your right leg up. Let's see if you can go just a tiny bit more without falling on your head. <laughs> Not a good idea. Awesome, letting go. Lower down the right leg at the back end of the mat, warrior two, so turn the back foot up. Warrior two. Bend down in the front knee, 
and create length in the back knee without hyperextending the back knee. Now you can be in warrior two without a lot of fuss. But now I want some fuss here <laughs> in your front, front shot thigh. So as you widen the distance here on the, the mat and try to kind of have this leg almost horizontal, you will create some heat and some stretches on the inner thigh as well. And we can deepen that with a binding. You can take the whole thing <laughs> or just part of it. So first of all, front hand to the inside of the foot. This arm reaching up, take it behind you, and this would be step one, just stay here. If you want to move further, this arm underneath the knee, and then see if your hands can reach each other behind you. Stack the shoulders as much as possible. Looking up or down, you choose. Release. Back heel off, step back, down dog. If you want to jump to the front, welcome to play with the handstand. Just a little bit of fun before we actually engaged on <laughs> in the other side. No need to actually get up there, just play a little bit with it if you like. <laughs> when you're done playing, come to your forward fold and then rise up again, mountain pose. The Mount of Olives is actually still there. I've been there when I was younger in, in Israel. It's a beautiful place. Lots of old olive trees, of course. <laughs> This time, as we fold forward, we're going to melt down. So take your chin towards your chest. You can round your shoulders just for the purpose of melting. <laughs> and then again, engage your core as you slowly lean forward. It's not an act of just relaxing, let gravity kind of pull you down. You're doing this with control. And of course, you bend your knees whenever <laughs> you feel like it. And when your fingers are down on the mat, just let your fingertips stay on the mat or your blocks as you might have done before. Left leg, lift it up. Again, forward fold with a split. So open up the hip. And the forward fold <laughs> is a matter of how strong you are in your hip and your glutes and how far you can actually go down. Just play with it. Two more breaths, lifting, lifting, maybe shaking a little bit. Awesome, letting go. Lower down, left foot, align the heels. Warrior two. Notice the back shoulder tends to pop a little bit to the front. So maybe take your hand on your shoulder joint to move a little bit back. Align it with the hip. Tuck the pelvis underneath, so you're kind of squared off on a one line. Not a long fat line, <laughs> but one short line with all of your body. Lift through the arch of the foot, front foot. And make sure all of back foot is firmly grounded. Stay here, follow me to a binding, I need to shorten my distance a little bit <laughs> between my feet to make this happen. This top hand, move it behind you, step one. Step two, arm underneath the knee joint, stay here. Or step three, the full version, 
binding, knees, front knee really bended. Shoulders stacked as much as possible. There's a lot of strength needed in the front thigh, so it's, it's a really hard pose. And let go. Ah, I feel like siding out. Oh, step back into down dog, side out, shake out, whatever's needed. child's pose for just a moment. And I want to comment on just one single thing during this class. What spoke to me as I read this passage actually with my family <laughs> the other day was the fact that the stone would be shouting. If not the people. <laughs> and I was like, why? That's weird. And then it dawned on me that it's maybe because <laughs> Jesus is saying, hey, I am in control. I am in control. I know what's going to happen. Somebody's going to say all these things. And even the most dead thing, a stone, will be able to shout out, <laughs> if not the people. What happens during Easter is not an act of coincidences, bad luck, <laughs> or whatever. It's all a part of God's plan. We see that throughout Luke. God has, or Jesus has prepared the cult. He has prepared the place for the supper. We see that in the next video. Lift up on your knees and then come down on your belly. Shoulder stretch and actually also lower back stretch. So please be mindful if you have lower back issues. Now take your right arm out, 90 degree angle in the elbow and kind of hold on to the floor like cactus hands. Now take your left leg, bend it and then roll over to rest on your side. This right arm or left arm actually is lifting you up, keeping you stable. And just adjust this hand or arm on the floor until you feel a stretch in your shoulder girdle. Shouldn't be painful, so just back out a little bit if it's too much. Try to relax your shoulder. moving on to the other side doing exactly the same your elbow and your shoulder girdle is somewhat aligned so this time right leg up and back and that might be different like my, my right foot there can reach the floor <laughs> couldn't on the other side so that's just how we roll Notice if you can relax your shoulders more. And let go. One last stretch. Cobra pose, so toenails on the ground. It's not often that I use this just as a stretch, but it's really good for my back at least. So lift up. I always take my hands a little bit further to the front than I might need to, but I just need to notice if my back is with me today <laughs> or whatever is going on. So I take it a little bit step by step. Relax your buttocks as we are going for a stretch, and I don't want to 
like tighten them up and kind of not work together with the stretch I'm doing in the lower back. Take your hands further in, maybe all the way underneath your shoulder if you can. Again, shoulders often are lifted up towards the sky, so if you want to like, take them down and rotate them a little bit back, that is a really good idea. Vertebrae by vertebrae coming down. Turn around and rest on the floor. I'll be finishing this video very shortly. If you want to sit and just read the text again, you can do that. This is from Luke 19. And you don't have to believe in all of the, the Christian narratives to do these Easter yoga sessions with me. But just notice all the small details that the author, Luke, there is trying to get across to his readers, that God is in control. And for me personally, I really find joy and peace in that. So from my heart to your heart, thank you so much for joining. And stay tuned as we go into the Passover meal with a relaxed yoga class. And then Good Friday uh, flow, or slow flow, actually. All right. Thank you so much.